Hi, my name is Derek Murphy, and I run the blog creativity.com, which is about basically using your creativity to make money online. Um, I'm making this video to talk about how I'm publishing my PhD thesis. So if you're a graduate student, or you wrote a th thesis for school, um, and you're not sure what to do with it, there's the possibility of getting it published and putting it out as a book, um, either for your career or to earn money. And I'll talk a little bit about the different ways that you can do that and the considerations you should be thinking of. So first of all, um, basically you write a PhD thesis, it goes in the library, even like a master's thesis, it's it's almost like practice. It doesn't really, it isn't intended to go out into the real world. They just want to make sure you can do research. But the problem is when you finish, um, you may get another job where your, your resume for a academia isn't really as important as you thought it would be, and you have this big manuscript sitting at home that's not doing anything. Um, you can put the manuscript out and try to sell it as a book to make some money, some extra money. Because I know for a lot of grad students, um, money is sort of a problem because of school loans or whatever, or trying to get a teaching job that, that pays the bills. If you're already, if you have these skills as a writer, um, self-publishing your writing is something you should really be thinking about. Even, you can often self-publish like your individual papers that you wrote for classes if they're really good. Uh, ideally, like, if you want to be a career academic, you need to publish your things a certain way and they probably won't earn a lot of money so you can publish them in in journals and you actually have to pay often to be included in those journals or you can get published by um, a, a university press or something which um, it, it can actually make quite a bit of money but what actually often happens is uh, if you're traditionally published you might get about eight percent of revenue and libraries may buy a lot of those books so it could it could become a significant portion of money just because if you get through the right system um, and you get a thousand libraries to order your book and you make a couple of dollars on each book, it can be a, a good chunk of money. Um, and that's one thing you want. You could definitely look into doing if you want to be a career academic, um, but it is more challenging. And so if you, for example, I'm not, like I make my money online with uh, book design and writing fiction now, so um, even though I have my PhD in literature, I'm not planning on using it. I don't need a teaching job. So I have this this thesis, which I thought was pretty decent about Paradise Lost, that I've decided to publish as a nonfiction book. Um, and because I'm a cover designer, I just made my own cover. I put it up on Amazon. I've been formatting it for a while. It has to be a little bit different. Here it is. Um, than the PhD thesis, because your PhD thesis has to be formatted a certain way. And also, like, I had to do mine in MLA format. Um, and for, an, it depends what you're going to do with your book, but for a nonfiction popular book, it probably doesn't need to be as heavily formatted, and it probably wouldn't be in MLA format. So I could have gone through, what I should have done is gone through and take out all the MLA formats and added a footnote uh, to the end of the book where I would have all of my notes. Um, and I could have done that, but it would have cost a lot of money to pay someone to do that for me, or, you know, weeks of my time that I don't have. So instead, I'm just put it, focusing on publishing it as a popular nonfiction book, which means I'll still, like, I'll, I'll have my work cited at the end, and I'll say, um, here's a link to the original PDF where I have all the links. Like, if you really need to check my research, um, I'll, I'll make that available, because I know that will be important for some students who need to back up their work and cite everything. But um, because I know how to format, I did this in Microsoft Word. Um, I'm still going through it, and I want to make sure that it's edited really well, even though it was pretty well edited already because I turned in from my PhD thesis. <clears throat> so it's pretty clean. I'm basically just formatting it to make it um, book-shaped so that it'll look good when I print it out. And I've also converted it to ebook. So this is actually the ebook version that I put up on pre-order for $2.99. Um, and I'll also put it out on some other sites, and then I'll make the paperback version available. If you want to make a nice hardcover book, you can do it with Ingram Spark, but I wouldn't really advise it because if you're self-publishing, it's hard to make your money back from a hardcover book, whereas with prints, like a paperback print on demand, you can make, um, if you're self-publishing, you make like 70%. So if I put it up for probably 12 or $13, I'll make um, 4 or $5 per book sold which is pretty good, and um, I could raise this pre-order price a lot higher. There's different pricing considerations, so if I wanted it to compete with traditionally published best-selling books in my genre, um, I might want it to be up at like $8.99, $9.99, just because people will take it more seriously. Um, and what I also need to do is start 
getting reviews for it, so I'll need to send it out to experts. Ideally, like I, I quoted probably a thousand academics um, in the book, so what I should do is send them a review copy or a PDF and say that I've quoted them and ask if they would like to review the book. Um, and eventually I'm, I might want to do that. It is, it's a weird balance because on the one hand I don't really care about my academic reputation because I don't need to go into teaching. Um, on the other hand, I don't want to be accused of just being like a, a hack or someone who is a couch researcher because I did put a lot of effort into it. So I want you know it to be a little bit credible so that people know I know what I'm talking about. Um, so I would like to get some you know, five to ten nice reviews from people like researchers in my genre who are pretty well-known and credible. Um, and so I will try to do that. This, you know, it may not earn quite a bit of money because it's, on the one hand, well, I don't know, we'll see. Um, what I was thinking originally was like a PhD thesis is a really specialized topic that's not going to appeal to a lot of people. However, uh, if I position it as a Paradise Lost Study Guide, that's a lot of people and students who will need to be searching for class um, to learn more about Paradise Lost, and that's a, a pretty major field. So I might get a lot of traffic just because I've positioned it that way. Um, and also, because of the way I've positioned it as a... It's not just really about Paradise Lost, it's kind of about political revolution, um, modernism, uh, literary theory. There's a lot of content, um, and kind of just the history of the devil and evil. That could be interesting enough for a lot of people that it can become a successful um, popular nonfiction book. We'll see how, like that depends a lot on how many reviews I get and how hard I market it and if I'm willing to spend a lot of money marketing it to get to the bestsellers lists. Um, but it could do, you know, reasonably well. It'll probably, because the other nice thing about self-publishing nonfiction like this is that um, most, most popular nonfiction books that are done well are traditionally published and they don't really have the same flexibility with publishing or pricing concerns to market well. So they focus on libraries and bookstores, but they usually don't take care of their Amazon page. So that, like, and it's kind of ridiculous, but if you, if you search for Paradise Lost um, on Amazon, you'll find like a hundred brilliant Paradise Lost reference guides that have zero reviews. And I was like the first person to review these books on Amazon because the, uh, the universities or the, the publishers, they just don't consider Amazon. They don't look at it as a selling platform. Um, or they're not focused on selling because they just sell to the libraries and nobody's like the the professors are, they, they may earn a little money from the books, but really they didn't publish those books to make money. They did it for their careers or their um, main income. So it's actually pretty easy if you're a self-published author doing quality nonfiction with a good cover to rank well in maybe the top 20 of your category, which means you'll get a lot of visibility and show up on Amazon, which is um, interesting. And uh, it's a little weird, like, if you, again, if you're, if you're going for a career in academia, self-publishing is not something you want to do lightly because they will still kind of look down on you or question it. Um, if you're doing it for your reputation or if you still need to go to, like, interviews and apply for jobs, um, this self-published book, even if it's great, even if it has tons of reviews on Amazon, I wouldn't take it into a, a, a job application at a university because they're going to question who published it and who the publisher is, and if they find out that I self-published it, it just doesn't have the same kind of um, credibility as it would if I got it done through a university press. Um, but that said, even if you have your PhD thesis, if you clean it up and position it more for a popular nonfiction book, you should be pitching it to university presses because they are looking for good quality um, new books. So if you have something that's, that has broad appeal or it's done well, um, it can't be like, I think, too academic, but if it has broader appeal, it's probably a good candidate to be published. So if you can learn enough about sending out a query and doing some research to find the best matches for a publishing house for you that publishes that kind of nonfiction um, specialized nonfiction, and an easy way to do this is just go through your bookshelf or your library and look at all the books in your category, probably all the same books that you used when you were researching your thesis, um, and just see who published those books. And you'll start to notice several publishers that pop up, and they publish a lot of this kind of material. And those are the publishers you want to reach out to first. And you can just say, I noticed that you published a lot of books in this uh, genre when I was researching my thesis. I have this book I think would make a good publication. Um, and it is, you know, it's a, 
it's a numbers game to some extent. You might need to query 20 or 30 publishing houses before you'll get any back. You, you might want to also uh, look at literary agents to see if there's literary agents who deal with nonfiction of those topics um, and to query those because a lot of the bigger publishing houses, they won't work with authors directly. University presses are pretty, usually pretty good with this. They'll, they'll work with authors directly, but um, if you're going for more popular nonfiction and one of like the big five publishing houses, it's better to get an agent who can really sell it uh, well. So you want to pitch in agents as well. Anyway, I'm just putting this video out there so you can think about it. If you have a thesis that's sitting around and you're not sure what to do with it, even if it's, you know, I, personally I would put it up on like scrubbed.com or Google Docs just to put it out there with your name on it so that it's available. Um, You'll want to check also, like if you turned it in for your final thesis at your university, um, they may have some regulations about what you're allowed to do with it or where you can publish it afterwards. But generally, after you graduate, um, you don't give away the rights of your, the of your PhD thesis or your master's thesis when you turn it in. You usually still maintain the rights um, as the author. So you may have to revise it or rebrand it a little bit. You might change the title. Um, but even some of your smaller papers, I think it's a pretty easy way to build a platform uh, around your writing if you just start putting those out there online. Either you put them out on your blog or turn them into 99 cent ebooks. Even like a short, you know, a 5,000 word essay can make a pretty decent um, 99 cent ebook on Amazon because the problem with, I know, I'm sure you know if you're a student, it's hard to get access to all the materials that you need when you're doing research. And sometimes, you know, if you can find the book on Amazon, it's just so much easier to buy it on Amazon than to try to track it down from the right library um, to get all the right references. So anyway, I have a lot more guides on actually publishing and book marketing on DIYBookFormats.com or DIYBookCovers.com or my main site, CreativeIndie.com, which I'll link to down below if you need um, help actually putting it together or formatting or designing your book. Um, I have a lot of resources for that. Thanks. Bye-bye.